So I'm going to show you how to install a Xenomod chip like this one. I can't see in the camera. Like this one onto your GameCube disk drive motherboard. This will sit right there. And you'll solder one, two, three, four, five, six points onto it. But first you do have to prep the points. Uh, the method I like to go for is what I like to call the spike method. And so by that what I mean is you would basically create little spikes on each of the points that are used and they would be raised. So when the mod chip sits in it, there's a little bit of solder poking out just close to the contact pads that you would actually need to solder to. And it makes it a lot easier. So when you add your flux and you flow a little bit of new solder on, it just all falls into place perfectly. So I'm going to prep these points. And what I like to do, of course, just grab a little bit of flux, just a little bit. And I put a tiny, tiny bit on each of the pads that we will be soldering to. So you have one right here, one right next to that C, one below the zero right there. You skip three over from the top, this top right corner, and these two diagonal ones right here, these two little tiny circles. So first things first, you add a little bit of solder to your iron. I use a chisel tip. And I created that first little spike. I'm going to take it off so I can show you. As you can see, there's a little spike right there. You want to do that for all of them. So I'm going to go quickly through all those points. And we'll be back in just a second. And now that I'm done prepping them, you can see that there's a spike on each point that we need to solder to. Before we continue, if you look down here, right down the center, right in between, where is it here? Sorry. Right there. Right in between, there's these three top pads and these three middle ones right here as well. You want to make sure that those are covered because when the mod chip sits right above it, you don't want to accidentally bridge it when you flow solder onto especially these two top points right here. So what you like to do is grab maybe a piece of capped on tape or you can even use electrical tape if you want and you need to block off that section. So I'm gonna do that real quick and I will be back. And just like that, you just put a little bit of electrical tape or capped on tape like I had mentioned it doesn't have to look necessarily pretty. You just don't want it to stick above the mod chip for obviously like cosmetic purposes. And then you could take your chip. And let me see, you can set it on there. You want to try to get it as close as you can. So you can see on the top right section that the two points that are right here are closer to their pads since they are a little bit harder to solder to. If you can see the spikes do stick through and that makes it quite a bit easier to flow the solder into. So let me grab some flux. Sorry, my hand is shaking a bit. And where is it? So you want to put a little bit of, hold on, let me set this camera down. let it focus. I 
might not be able to do this easily. Let's see through the camera so you can see it. Hold on, I will put this on the camera tripod so you can actually see it better. Okay, so now that you have it on there, you do want to align it again. I did get it out of alignment. And you want to put a little bit of flux over each of these points, enough so it touches the solder below and the, the pad that it will need to connect to as well. You want to have plenty You do want to make sure that the, the flux you are um, applying is not going to both points if they have two in a section there. Then you can clean off your iron. And now the way I like to do this is get kind of a, a bit of a ball of solder on it. So I'm going to rotate this right here. What I like to do, let me see if you can see on the camera, right there. I'll hold my finger down and I take that ball of solder and I basically push in and hold. I'm going to do another one real quick. That is tacked down already. So you don't have to necessarily worry too much. Make sure you can still see it in camera. So you're gonna hold down. Gonna hold down in there just for a bit and lift. Now I'm gonna show you under the camera exactly why that's beneficial. So you can focus. My camera is on it. Uh, very wobbly looking stand. So you can see, focus, by getting a bigger ball of solder with that flex, it flows down to that point. It makes full contact. God, it just will not focus. But you can see it though. It, it, goes, it makes full contact all the way to the bottom. And you want to get, make sure every point has quite a bit in there. So I know most people go with the heat the point and then add the solder. But with this, it's a lot easier to get it there and your solder joints are not going to go cold. As long as you got the right temperature, of course. So once again, get some solder on your iron. And these points are all flexed. So you want to kind of put it in an angle if you're using this chisel tip. If you're not using it and you're using like a pencil type, then it doesn't really quite matter. Hold it and flow it. That's good. Get a little bit more. Hold it, let it flow. I'm gonna turn this around so you can see it. All right, that one's good. That one did have significantly less flux because it did get burned off a little bit. And I will show you again, once I can get this to focus. And you can see the solder is touching the bottom, the contact point. And this is the whole reason why I really like the method I'm trying to show you, which I like to call the spike method.
it does help quite a bit. So the installation is done. But of course we do have to clean up. So quickly get some isopropyl alcohol. You can either spray it or use a Q-tip like I'm doing. It doesn't really matter, but you do want to clean up. And once you're done cleaning up, you can install it back into your GameCube. And this is an extra board I had. So this one doesn't have any GameCube I can actually plug it into at the moment. But to let you know if your Xeno Mod Chip installation was working after you've installed it, when you see it um, turn on, look from the side where the fan is of your GameCube and you'll see these LEDs right here. They will blink. There's a, there's a first and second stage of LED flashing that it goes through. The first one will probably blink a couple times if it goes red and then it turns off and then it turns back on again then your, your mod chip is working. Another way to be certain is that when you turn on your GameCube and you have uh, a controller plugged in, hold start while you're pressing the power button on your console. And if you see a menu pop up and it says Xeno after the GameCube logo has uh, gone through its own splash screen, then you know it's also working. Of course, you can always test an out of region game, a backup game if you have one. All those methods are ways of testing your mod chip. Uh, the clones, which are like these ones, this is Z-E-N and an 8, not Z-E-N-O. This is a clone. They're going to generally be using red LEDs. Some of the original ones I think were red and green, but uh, that's pretty much it. So this is the wireless install. If you are wanting to do um, another way of installing this, you can do it wired. You can place it off to the side if you want so with some double sticky tape and you can run wires if you don't feel comfortable doing the wireless install. Now, while this is much faster, there is more risk to messing it up or lifting pads if you're not um, doing the soldering correctly. So it is up to you how you choose to do this installation. But this is how you install a Xeno mod chip into your GameCube, and I hope it helped.